In this video, I will show you how to save so much time with training neural nets. They've even been under Karpati approved. So you want to become a neural net god? Yes? Then watch this video. Number one, didn't overfit a single batch first. All right, so let's just say you are done setting up your network, the training loop, hyperparameters, etc. It's time to just start training, right? No, don't do it. It's very tempting, but just don't, trust me. So let me show you what to do instead. Where you've set up your training loader, you're gonna want to take out a single batch, right? So how we can do that is we can do data comma target equals next of iter of the training loader, right? Now we have a single uh, batch. And then where we have our, our loop going through the training loader, we'll just uncomment that. Uh, right, we'll, we will comment that. And then we'll dedent everything here, right? And so what we're gonna do is, we're gonna run this single batch for a number of epochs, right? Now we're having number of epochs equal three. Uh, and so we can have a batch size of 64, but it might be better just to check, can it overfit a single example, right? If it can do that, then uh, then perhaps we can try larger batch size. But let's just do uh, that and let's try and run this first. So uh, we ran for three epochs, that's obviously not enough. It's, it's decreasing, but it's not very, uh, very low. So let's just change this to a thousand and rerun it. All right, so as we can see now, the loss is very, very low. So it's overfitting a single example. Now let's increase this. Let's have a batch size of 64 and let's rerun it. All right, so it's becoming very close to zero, meaning we can overfit uh, the single batch, right? Now we're confident that our neural network has the capability and there are no bugs. This is a very quick sanity check to see if the network is actually working. Trust me, this will save you so much time. Every time you implement in your network, when you set up your training, everything, just overfit a single batch first. Just do it. All right, so we're gonna remove this thing right here, and now we can uh, bring everything back as it was in the beginning. Like that. All right, number two, forgot to set training or evaluation mode. So the next thing is when you're actually checking the accuracy, uh, you want to toggle the evaluation mode of the network. So if we're just doing check accuracy like this, and we're not doing model.eval inside of this check accuracy function, then we're gonna get a lot worse performance. So what we want to do, well actually let's compare the two. So let's do model.eval and then we'll do check accuracy test loader and model and then we'll do model.train uh, so we'll toggle it back and let's just run this and let's see what the difference is so i think now we're just training for I don't know, yeah three epochs yeah so as you can see just by toggling the model.eval we'll get i mean uh, greater than four percent improvement that's a lot okay so that's a big big difference now why is it so important to do model.eval well if we check in our model here our smaller network we're using dropout and when we're converting uh, we're, when we're toggling the evaluation mode of our network we're actually removing the dropout and we're doing the appropriate scaling that's needed uh, for the weights etc so when we're actually evaluating our model we don't want to use dropout right or and for example we don't want to use batch norm either uh, so or let's see we want to use the um the computed averages during training when we're doing evaluation for batch norm but anyways uh, what's important to know is that when you're testing when you're checking on test data etc you want to always do model.eval before and then you need to toggle it back on do model.train so you can continue uh training so this is a quick one, but it does a big, big difference. So always remember to do this. Number three, forgot to zero grad. 
This one is quite simple, but it's also going to do a big difference. All right. And it can be kind of hard to debug, right? This is a sneaky one that you might not notice. So what we're going to do is let's just uh, remove this optimizer.zero grad and let's just run it and we'll see what kind of accuracy we'll get. Uh, and remember now we're using the model.eval and the model.train as we should when we're testing our model. Not using optimizer.zero grad after three bucks we get 64% accuracy or almost 65%. All right, so let's put this back. We'll do optimizer.zero grad and then we'll see what we get. You see, so that's about 30% difference in the test accuracy, which is insanely um, like that's that's so huge. OK, so if you forget this, you're basically screwed. Don't forget to use this. And uh, why it's so important to use this is because you want the gradient step, right? The optimizer step to be done on the current batch. If you're not doing optimizer zero grad, you're using all of the accumulated gradients of all the previous batches. Uh, so that's not what you want to do. You want to, to zero grad. There are no accumulated gradients. You want to compute the loss for this current batch. And then you want to do a step, a gradient step for this current batch. All right. So zero grad backward and then step. Four, using softmax with cross entropy loss. So a very common mistake is doing something like self.softmax and then we'll do and then softmax and then we'll specify the dimension. In this case, it's dimension one. And then we'll use the softmax on the output, right? Because you, you always see that people use softmax on as their output layer, right? Now, the problem here is when you're using softmax as your output, but you're using cross entropy loss. And this is because cross entropy loss is essentially two things. It's first softmax and then it's negative log likelihood. And then you don't want to do softmax as your output because it's already including the cross entropy loss. So you would essentially then be doing softmax on softmax, which, and that might be a problem because you, you might get vanishing gradients problem uh, because, uh, because of this. So you don't want to use two softmax if you're using cross entropy loss. Uh, and uh, we can see, let's see how big of a difference this gets. And I'm gonna, just gonna paste something here. All right, so don't bother about this right here, but this is essentially just so that we get uh, deterministic behavior. I'm gonna go into this in a separate video actually. So uh, don't bother about this. This is just so we can compare using softmax and not using softmax. So I'm gonna run this and we'll see what we get. So using softmax, uh, and then another softmax, I guess we get about nine, we get 92.78. And, uh, I mean, that's pretty good. So this is, it doesn't do that. Well, let's see how much it actually impacts, but it's not going to be like the, uh, like the zero grad, uh, that was like 30%. So let's rerun it now and let's see what we get. So, uh, the difference is about 1.2%. That's pretty good. Right. And it's also going to be faster training, not using the softmax. So this is a quick one that's going to, you know, give you a better, some better performance. Number five, using bias when using batch norm. So let's say we have some convolutional neural network, uh, a very basic one. We just have a comp layer. We have a max pool, another comp layer, and then the linear layer to the number of classes at the end. And uh, let's say we want to add a batch norm. So we're going to do self batch norm one and then dot batch norm 2D. And we're going to use it after con one. So con one has a out channels of eight. So we're just going to set eight right there. And then we're going to do uh, self dot BN one after the com one. And uh, let's run that. And uh, actually to get a good comparison, let's also set the, uh, uh, the seeds for deterministic behavior. So we can actually see if there's a difference, but yeah, so let's run this. All right, so we get 98.25. And uh, the, the thing is here that when we're using a batch norm after a com layer or, or a linear layer, anything like that, we and we have a bias term, that's actually a, an unnecessary parameter. It's not gonna cause any, anything that's horribly wrong, but it's just, it's unnecessary. So we can set bias equals to false here, and that should be uh, equivalent. Uh, and let's let's see if it is. So it's 98.25. So let's run this. All right. It, actually, it was slightly worse for some reason, but 98.22. Uh, this should be equivalent. So so this example might not show that, but uh, anyways, when you're using batch norm after a com layer or anything with a bias term, 
you can actually set the bias term equal to false. You don't need it because that's included in the batch norm. Number six, using view as permute. So the next thing is the difference between view and permute. So what we're going to do is we're just going to create some tensor, uh, towards a tensor, and we're just going to do, I don't know, one, two, three, and um, four, five, six. So we're doing a two by three tensor. And, uh, and then we're just going to do print uh, X and then we're just going to, I don't know, let's say you wanted to actually permute, you want to do transpose. So you want it to be, um, you know, you want to have the first column as one, two, three, and the second as four, five, six. You might think that view does this. So you could, for example, do X dot view, and then you're going to set the shapes. So you're going to do three and two. And you're thinking that this is actually a, per, per, like a transpose or a permutation. Yeah, so you're actually permuting the, the dimensions, uh, but you're not. So this uh, is not the same as doing x dot permute and then 1 and 0. Uh, and so this is transpose, right? Uh, per, transpose is a sp special case of permute. But anyways, if we run this, we get, so we get 1, 2, 3, uh, 4, 5, 6. That's the just the tensor. And then we get 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. That's not the same as one, two, three, and then four, five, six, right? That's this is permute. This is permute uh, making the uh, taking transpose, and this right here is uh, using view. So what view does is it's just going to do whatever is most, I guess, convenient. You could say it's just going to take one, two. That's the first two uh, elements, and then three, four, and five, six, right? It's just going to take the the elements and then just make them into that shape in the way that's most convenient. Um, yeah, that was kind of a bad explanation, but hopefully you get what this does. Um, and I, I've made another video where I explained these two uh, in more detail. But anyways, when you're using view as a way of like a permuting the axis or dimensions, then remember that that might be a flawed way of doing it and you might actually want to use permute. Number seven, using bad data augmentation. All right, so this mistake is one that I've made multiple times and hopefully I can save you the trouble of doing the same. So, you know, you're, you're, you're doing some network and you're training on the MNIST data set because you're just trying to learn and then you're Googling and you see that people are using uh, cool data augmentation and, you know, that improves the performance. So we're going to do the same. We're going to do my transforms. We're going to do uh, transforms.compose and we're just going to, I don't know, use... Uh, transforms dot random uh, vertical flip and we're just going to set the probability to 1.0 we're always going to vertically flip you wouldn't want to do this right you would set the set this to a 0.5 or something um, but then we're going to do transforms dot random horizontal flip and we're just going to set the probability to 1.0 as well uh, this is just because it's for this example but anyways then we're just going to do transforms dot to tensor Right, and you might even use more, uh, but I'm just using this because this is gonna showcase my point. In that, when you're using multiple, uh, when you're using these data augmentations, this is not doing anything good to your data set. Right, the, the data, the augmentation you're using must be. You must consider what the data set is. I'm gonna show you an example. If we do this, we're gonna get something that looks like this. Right, this is now vertically flipped and horizontally flipped. And when you see this, I have no clue what digit this is, right? This is a completely changed the digit. So when you're using, when you're doing the data augmentation, you need to make sure that you're not actually modifying the target output. Because if, for example, if you have a nine and you're vertically flipping that, that would, act, that would change the target output for that digit. So in the end, our network will just be horrible if this is what we're training it on. So, uh, yeah, be careful with this. Uh, you want data augmentation is good, but not all data augmentation is good. Uh, you need to make sure that what it, the data augmentation is doing is actually what you want it to do. Number eight, not shuffling the data. So another common mistake that can uh, screw up your training is that you're not shuffling the data. So, um, I mean, well, it's, I guess it's nuanced. So in most cases, you want to shuffle your data. For example, if you're using the MNIST data set, and we don't want... You know, the, in, I mean, 10 batches of only ones and then 10 batches of only twos, etc. Right. We want the batch to be mixed of all the digits. So 
what we can do is we can do shuffle yeah for our yeah so this is wrong we're not going to do it uh, on the data set this should be on the on the loader so here we're going to do shuffle equals true um and also on the test we're going to shuffle equals true uh, but also this is one thing that can be as i said it's nuanced if you're using time series data or anything like that where the order is actually important then you don't want to shuffle it right so be careful with this as well but in most cases you would want to shuffle it um, so keep that in mind number nine not normalizing the data all right so for this next thing i've copied in the uh the seed so that we get deterministic behavior again and uh, we're not going to do softmax so remove this and then so the thing is here um is that people forget to normalize the data so when you're doing uh perhaps you're ignoring this part right uh so this is the mnist data set where we only have one channel that's why it's only one value here but anyways you you want the data to become centered with mean zero and standard deviation one so for that you would need to figure out first so first of all two tensor divides everything by 255 so everything is between zero and one and then you after two tensor you want to normalize and for that you would need to first go through the the data set and then check what is the mean of the data set right now what is the standard deviation of the data set right now and then you would do this right you would do transform that normalize and then mean equal to that value you checked standard deviation equal to that value that you that you got when you checked the data set um, and uh, you would have to do this for each channel if it's rgb so for the mnist data set you just need one value uh, and so let me just run this and we're just going to run it for one epoch so that we can see what the difference is so without the normalization you get 92.24 percent right that's pretty good uh, if we rerun this now using the normalization we now get 93.04 so yeah that's 0.6 percent no more right yeah 0.8 percent that's that's a decent improvement just by doing this line right here uh, so uh, keep that in mind this is something that you want to do uh, it's it's less important when you're using batch norm but still it's it's important so remember to normalize your data Number 10, not clipping gradients when using RNNs, GRUs, or LSTMs. So when you're using uh, L uh, RNNs, GRUs, or LSTMs, uh, and uh, now we have a fully connected right here, but pretend this is an LSTM, then you would want to uh, do gradient clipping. So um, you're going to get, I mean, if you don't do gradient clipping, you might get exploding gradient problems, uh, and uh, you would notice that, so you would see that there's an error but this might be hard to debug and might you know take you some time to figure out so what you want to do is uh you want to go down to your training loop and and uh after doing the loss dot backward right when you've computed the gradients you want to do uh torch dot nn dot utils dot clip grad norm there are a couple of different ways of clipping the gradients this is a one way that's convenient i guess so you would do model dot parameters and you would set some max norm here max norm and we'll set it equal to one so uh it's just one one line but it can make a big difference and uh save you some time so uh that was 10 uh common mistakes uh let me know in the comments which one you which one did i miss right there are many more mistakes so if you think that that's one that's important uh write it in the comments and uh I might do an updated version of this in the future where I include some more. So uh, yeah, thank you so much for watching the video and I hope to see you in the next one.